In this training, you will learn how to edit an existing risk, edit a bow tie and associate actions, add a new risk, and manage risks using the O3 dashboard. The roles and permissions assigned to you will affect what you are able to see and do within O3. The risk log allows users to record potential risks that would derail a project in order to make plans to mitigate them, as well as make plans to recover from them if they occur. Events come up all the time that can affect a project's scope, schedule, and budget. By having a place to record and track any foreseeable risks, you can make plans to prevent the event from happening in the first place, and a plan for getting back on track if the event occurs. You can also assign these tasks to individuals or teams so everyone has visibility into the current state and action plans. The Risk Log can be found under Projects by selecting the tab Tools, then Risk Log. Here, you will see a list of risks, along with their details. Risks can be defined as Level 1 Risks or General Risks. You will only see General Risks unless you have been given permission to see Level 1 Risks, in which case you would be able to view both. Level 1 Risks are defined by your organization, but typically indicate project manager or leadership level risks that require close monitoring. Let's dig into a risk to learn about the information that you can capture and track. The first thing to point out is how to mark this risk as a level one risk. If you have the user permissions to do so, use the action button in the top right hand corner to mark or unmark this risk as level one. Back on the risk detail screen, you have access to all kinds of information that will help you track and manage this risk. For example, here you can see the name of the risk, the risk type, and the status. The status is important because it differentiates between an event that has been identified as a potential risk versus an event that has actually occurred. Underneath the header details, you will find tabs with additional information. On the Details tab, you will find risk definitions such as Risk Functional Area, Mitigation Plan, Mitigation Status, and Start and Finish Dates. Let's look at each to see how to handle them. For Risk Functional Area, this displays the functional area that this risk would affect, such as a commercial risk, technical risk, etc. The Mitigation Plan section displays what you plan to do to mitigate this risk, such as treat the potential problem. Mitigation Status displays how the determined plan is currently viewed. Does it need more planning, or is it acceptable as is? And finally, the planned start and planned finish dates display when you plan to enact this mitigation plan. Of course, you can always come in and put in the actual dates later. Moving down the screen, you will see the Current Impact and Probability section. This is where you will see the level of impact this potential event has on the project, and how likely it is this event will occur. Both are ranked on a scale between very low and very high. This is also where the trend of the risk is marked. So, if it is trending up, that indicates a higher impact and or probability. Trending down means a lower impact and or probability. Trending neutral means, as you guessed it, trending the same as when the risk was originally identified. If this risk had target impacts and probability, these would be recorded in the target impact and probability section using the same scale of very low to very high. And finally, after all this talk about the potential risk, someone has to take ownership of it. The task assignment section is where a priority, a due date, and the responsible party will display. A responsible party can either be an individual user, or it can be assigned to a certain role or user group. That's it for the Details tab. The next tab is the Bowtie tab. This is a visual screen showing the potential event in the center, the cause of the event to the left, and the consequence if said event occurs to the right. These fields are all free text. This section also shows us any preventative actions that can be taken in order to prevent the event from happening, as well as any recovery actions that can be taken if the event occurs. The benefit of adding them here is that it will kick off other trackable actions within O3. Also, if a task is created as a recovery action, the task will not come into effect unless the status of the risk is changed to activated or addressing. 
Moving along the tabs, the next option is the Actions tab. This would display any actions or tasks that had been added in the bowtie, as well as any actions or tasks created in tasks and associated with this risk. You can also add actions from here if necessary. The Comments tab allows us to view or free text comments about this risk. And finally, the History tab shows when the risk was added and by whom, as well as any time the risk has been updated. If you had made any changes while in the Details screen, you would want to make sure that you selected Save Changes at the top of the screen before moving on. Now, let's say that it is your job to enter a newly identified risk. To do so, just click the plus sign to start a new risk and enter the appropriate information. Your risk will now show up in the risk log. One last thing to note is you have the option to add risk widgets to your dashboard view. The risk heat map is found under Project Management and is based on the impact and probability of the risks in the log. All other risk widgets can be found under Risks. Use these widgets to easily manage your risks. Documenting risks in O3 is a way to easily keep an eye on any event that could change the progression of the project. In addition to this, you can also create a plan of attack for preventing the event in the first place, as well as what to do to get back on track if the event occurs. If you have questions or suggestions for O3, please contact Client Success at o3.solutions. Have a productive day!